launch, mission managers encountering a persistent problem with fueling the rocket, another troublesome hydrogen leak. Good evening, I'm Lisa Bell. Thanks for joining us. The scrub came just after 11 this morning. Again, uh, launch director Charlie Blackwell Thompson calling a scrub for the day here at the Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39B. The team now going into the cutoff procedure after uh, being unable to resolve a hydrogen leak. Liquid hydrogen leaks have plagued the Artemis missions going back to the practice countdowns, but today's leak was one they had not seen before. New Six Anchor and space expert Eric Von Anken begins our team coverage tonight from the Kennedy Space Center. He has been there since early this morning when the launch team first started tanking. NASA has a problem, but doesn't know exactly what that problem is, or at this point, how to fix it. We do know it's somewhere in a connection point, a fueling connection point on the SLS rocket. That was solely the reason for the scrub today. There was a leak detected in the engine cavity. The launch team tried everything they could think of to stop the leak once. And they have got... Uh, the launch director to sign off on a troubleshooting plan and then again engineers uh, discussing another troubleshooting plan to try and fix a leak and even a third time but nothing worked launch director charlie blackwell thompson just called uh, a scrub we don't go into these tests lightly right we we don't just say hey we think we hope this is going to work um, the confidence confidence to do another launch attempt today was born out of the fact that uh, we understood the hydrogen leaks that we had on, on Monday. Those are different than the leak that we had today. And we, we understood the engine issue. So we were confident coming into today. But as the administrator said, we're not going to launch till we're ready. Leaking liquid hydrogen is an old problem for the Artemis 1 team, but in a new spot this time at yet another connection point where the fueling hoses meet between the rocket and the mobile launcher. On Monday morning, during the first launch attempt, a similar hydrogen leak delayed that countdown, but it was at a different disconnect. The launch team was able to solve it by trying the same troubleshooting steps they tried Saturday morning. This time, though, it didn't work. When we're ready to go back out there, We'll go back out there and try for another uh, launch. Mission managers say what they need now more than anything is time to figure out what to do and where to do it. Can they start on the fix here at the pad or do they have to roll the rocket back to the vehicle assembly building off to my right? They say Monday or Tuesday we should know more. One certainty though at this point in order to recertify their flight termination system, that's the ability to destroy the rocket in case it veers off course. They have to do that inside the VAB, and that expires, that certification expires in the next few days. For now at the Kennedy Space Center, Eric Von Eichen getting results. News 6. Eric, thank you. Now, Artemis 1 is an uncrewed test flight. If all goes well, there will be at least two more launches similar to this one in the coming years. The plan is to launch four astronauts on a loop around the moon in 2024. Then one year later in 2025, the main event. The rocket will actually play a role in putting the first woman and the next man on the moon. Officials in Brevard County were expecting 400,000 people on the Space Coast this weekend. Many hoping to watch history left disappointed for the second scrub in a row, New Six's Molly Reed was there. Another disappointing day here on the Space Coast with thousands of people now going home without seeing a launch. Thousands were packing into parks like Space View here, some camping overnight, others here getting at the break of dawn to try to get the best viewing spot. We did a good time. You know, it's been busy, but I'm very disappointed, but... Hopefully I'll see it someday. Sisters Mary Holland and Phoebe Hale drove down from the Carolinas hoping to witness history today. It was part of my bucket list. I called my sister and said, you get to South Carolina, we going to see a launch. And like many who traveled great miles to be here, they were left with just a view of the parked Artemis rocket 10 miles east of the river today. Tying a Saturday launch in with a holiday weekend, over 400,000 people are expected to be here for take two of an Artemis launch attempt. We wanted to hear it, see it, and feel it. Many were sitting on the edge of their seats as news of problems at the launch pad broke out before the disappointing scrub announcement came just a couple hours later. Safer than sorry is what I'd say as much money as they got involved with it. 
but it does disappoint us. I mean, a lot of folks are disappointed. We make a long drive to get here and oh well. While some made a mad dash to the car to try and beat traffic, others stuck around, soaking in the view for just a while longer. We drove all this way. We like to see something. Now, some of the people we talked to who came into town say that they're going to stick around to at least see a launch. Tomorrow night, SpaceX is expected to launch its Falcon 9 Starlink. In Titusville, I'm Molly Reed getting results. News 6.